Good evening and welcome to News Hour. I am Kojo Kwafo. Coming up in tonight's edition of News Hour, USA pledges to fund a two million United States dollars solar energy project in the country. Parliament approves eight presidential nominees to serve in various positions. Business community leaders assure President Bill of their support. And the Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Jaldejalo, says the private sector is critical in ensuring increase in price production in the country. All these stories and some more are lined up in tonight's edition of News Hour. In a bid to advance government's new direction and goals in the energy sector, the United States Agency for International Development will implement a $2 million cooperative agreement to support the adoption of solar energy practices and reduce demand on the country's power grid. The move will directly impact several key areas of Ebola recovery and ensure future resilience in Sierra Leone. This was revealed during a courtesy call by the U.S. aid country coordinator Khadijat Mojidi on the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Dr. Ali Kaba. Hawana to Bangura reports. The U.S. aid country coordinator, Khadijat Monjindi, while briefing the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Dr. Ali Kaba, said the new Global Development Alliance is to promote sustainable energy through U.S. aid's cross-boundary solar projects. The agreement, she further explained, establishes an alliance between U.S. aid and cross-boundary energy holdings. She added that it aimed at increasing electricity access in underserved areas, increase economic activity by strengthening trade, investment and infrastructure, and increasing the capacity of the government to manage and maintain a system to distribute off-grid renewable energy. Madam Monjini said the partnership will achieve these goals while increasing total energy generation capacity, increasing the penetration of clean energy technologies in Sierra Leone. She said it is expected that this project will be launched in September this year. Dr. Ali Kaba expressed thanks and appreciation to U.S. aid and partners for creating such an alliance that will not only enhance access to improve resilience of business in Sierra Leone through cleaner and cheaper power, but will also make energy more affordable. The availability of energy, Dr. Kaba added, will help to foster a more robust environment for trade and investment, agriculture, education, and will attract additional multinational or regional companies and local enterprises to the energy ecosystem. This, he said, will clearly demonstrate that Sierra Leone is a survivable investment destination. The Foreign Affairs Minister assured the U.S. aid country coordinator of his ministry's commitment and support in creating the conducive environment to implement the solar energy projects in the country. Meanwhile, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation on behalf of the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists presented a plaque to the U.S. Embassy and U.S. aid in appreciation of their dedicated and substantial material support to sludge during and after the 2018 general elections. The Sierra Leone Parliament has approved eight presidential nominees to serve in various positions. This approval came after the Committee on Appointment presented their reports and recommendations to the House of Parliament after the interview process. Amit Sisi was there. 
In his report, the leader of government business, Honorable Sidi Mohamed Tunis, said all the nominees went through a very rigorous interview process where members of the committee probed into the educational background, experience and vision of the nominees. Honorable Tunis furthered that the committee is satisfied with the nominations and believe that they can deliver in their various appointments. The Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, today's nominees are for very, very important positions. Revenue generation, we have a lady who a lot of our colleagues have spoken about, highly qualified and intelligent lady. I have no doubt that she will do her level best. We have a very young man in the Petrol and Directorate who has served other countries, who has supported other companies in other countries. He supported the discovery of oil in Ghana. He was a very senior engineer in Ghana. And today Ghana is enjoying oil. I hope now that you are in Sierra Leone and as a Sierra Leonean, we will not only stop at discovery, we will, now, we will soon be talking about production. And then Sierra Leone also will start enjoying the benefit of oil. The leader of the Coalition for Change Party, C4C, Sa Emma Silamina, urged the nominees to dream big and deliver in their various capacities. Honorable members, let me limit myself to just four pieces of advice to those four that categorize. Number one, I'm a public service, Mr. Keroba, nobody here has an inkling of doubt for his journey that he has traversed through the public service of his country. And I have no inkling of doubt that he will do well. One more time for that particular sector. Let that be an urban and rural diagonal matrix. Number two, for um, the chief or the chairperson for NRA. NRA, the breadbasket of this nation, will do us good. A concern as we go to that particular sector that they have to look with a very strong eye. The mining sector, as well as those big private sectors, the Income Tax Act of 2000 leaves a very great area. Among the eight presidential nominees approved by Parliament are Toma Adama Jabi, Chairperson National Revenue Authority, Mansoud Mbuya, Board Chairman, Sayalon Port Authority, Kalilu Oba, Chairman, Public Service Commission, Timothy Musa Kaba, Director General, Petroleum Directorate, and David Pandanoa, Executive Director, Sayalon Road Safety Authority. Honorable Lamin Kaba is an APC MP in Kwenadugu District. He admonished appointees to be professional in their work and not to politicize their offices. You need not be political. Your appointment might be political, but your service to this nation should not be political. So go into very serious positions, and I do pray and hope that this honorable house will approve your, nomine your nominations. And go out there and ensure that the new direction, every politician is selfish. As I am standing here, my biggest wish is for you to fail. But should I allow my selfish desire to overrule the desires of over 7 million Nigerians? These set of appointees are among the list of about 16 nominations made by the president last week. The question is... That the ninth report of the first session of the Committee on Appointments and the Public Service be adopted by the House, and that the recommendations contained therein be approved. All those in favor say aye. Aye. A lot better. All against say nay. The eyes have it. Amit Sisi, SLBC, Freetown. Business community leaders have assured President Julius Madabio of their support.
the media assurance during an interactive session with the president at State House. Representatives of different business entities also briefed the president about the challenges they're faced with as a community. Harmosi has the details. Meeting with business leaders, Ministry of Trade and Industry, and the president as they were opportune to brief what is happening in the business sector in Sierra Leone. Representatives from the business communities, including Rice Importers, Importers Association, Traders Organization, Oil Marketing Companies, and Local Industries, stated that they will continue to import large quantum of commodities into the country as before, despite the challenges. They called on President Julius Madabu to look into the concerns raised, especially in the area of foreign currency and electrification, as their major challenges. A representative of the traders' organization, Jibila Ture, expressed his impression to SOBC with the meeting with President Bill, as they as traders have also been faced with a lot of challenges in the area of marketplace, small and medium enterprise support. We tried especially to at least to highlight the challenges that we are facing in the market, especially in the way the business people out there. And there is a lot of challenges that, that we put across so that the His Excellency can at least address some of these challenges. And of course, one, we talk about the Old Sales and Retail Trade Act, which we really want His Excellency the President to look at because we are down there selling in the streets. At the same time, you find out that the people that import certain goods in this, in this, uh, and that the importers who are in the shops selling, selling the same retail price in the shop. Minister of Trade and Industry, Peter Bayoku Conte, commended the representatives for the commitment and support they have pledged in terms of doing business with the government. He stated that his government interest is to promote trade in a conducive environment. The Minister of Trade promised to address their challenges so that they can do more as the government is also planning to construct factories in every district and also decentralize the distribution of fuel. The Minister of Trade and Industry appealed to the business leaders to avoid importing substandard products in the country. The President was very happy to meet with the community and he took note of their concerns and he told them that uh, these are concerns that uh, he will address together with other ministers like the Minister of uh, uh, of finance, the Minister of uh, Transport. So these are issues that uh, will be will be addressed with time, of course. So I'm sure that uh, this is not the only meeting, as he said. Uh, we will continue to meet from time to time to address issues of common concern. Of course, the President made, made it very clear that um, as a government, we need the business community, but also the, the business community needs us as a government. President Julius Madabu highlighted that the meeting with the business community and government will be a continuous process as they need to know what is happening in the business sector. Adding that during the election campaign, he made commitments to the people of Sierra Leone and he will want to make sure that he delivers to them. President Julius Madabu noted that concerns of high rate of foreign exchange, electricity and margin will be looked into as the higher the profit for business people, the more they pay their taxes. In the area of distribution of electricity, much has been done, at least as the process is still ongoing, and to make sure it is well stabilized. Capital interest rate is another area where they should look into next by engaging the Minister of Finance and the Bank Governor to solve it. That means change of attitude. So that is my challenge. I need the support of you. We give you the support you require, but I also need your support in going forward. Thank you all for coming, and let's meet another time. What the business community is expecting now is for the government to make frantic efforts in making sure that the exchange rate is reduced and also taxes on imported commodities are cut down. As a BCTV News I in Freetown, how are most reporting? The Chief Minister has assured persons living with disabilities of free quality education and health care. Professor David Francis was speaking at a Global Disability Satellite Summit held at the British Council Hall in Freetown. This commitment, he said, would achieve the lasting change for persons living with disabilities. 
Princess Gibson was at the event organized by the British High Commission and she now reports. Disability is a cause and consequence of poverty. With 15% of global disability, Sierra Leone as a developing country should take steps to address challenges faced by persons with disability. This year's Global Disability Summit Satellite has seen commitments by the Chief Minister, Professor David Francis, to persons with disability. As a government, we are committed to making the possible to provide free quality education for children with disabilities and we will put many of them in place to facilitate their access and learning. As a government, we will take on board the special case of children with disability as we start the implementation of the free quality education program in September. Secondly, we will make free healthcare accessible to people with disabilities by identifying the challenges to access and developing a strategy to enhance their access. Executive Director, Welfare Society for the Disabled in Cambia District, Joseph Aliu, who made a presentation on behalf of persons with disability, outlined some of the challenges they are faced with. Special needs schools are generally in the country and they are far apart. And for some of these children, there is no way they can get an education if the special needs school are not in their communities or in their districts. Their parents are poor. There is a strong relationship between poverty and disability. Lack of disability aids also in house in our discussions with these children. British High Commissioner to Sierra Leone Guy Warrington noted that the Global Charter has high-ranging actions for lasting change for persons with disability. Another form of disability is autism, which are according to the head of autistic society Sierra Leone May Pentimity, requires highly specialized education and other needs. Some of the recommendations made includes the full implementation of the 2011 Disability Act to foster inclusion, the establishment of a disability desk at various ministries, departments and agencies, and governments to honor Global Disability Charter. Princess Gibson, SLBC News. The Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Jurde Jallo, has said that the private sector is critical in ensuring increase in rice production in the country. He made a statement at the launch of a consultative forum held at the Miata Conference Hall, U Building in Freetown. The theme was Beyond Boundaries, mobilizing private sector to invest in rice production, processing and marketing. Daphne Kemamakoli filed in this report. Rice self-sufficiency for Sierra is top priority in order to ease the burden of rice importation into the country. The Minister of Agriculture estimates that about $200 million is used annually for the importation of rice to a country whose 72% of the total land mass is arable for rice production. A little over 12% is under cultivation, which has made it difficult for Sierra to feed itself and to even export rice. The Minister of Agriculture, whose mandate is to regulate and monitor the production of the country's staple food, has realized that the country cannot continue to be importing rice. Hence, has organized a conference to mobilize the private sector to invest in rice production, processing and marketing. The conference is for government to affirm its commitment in providing the conducive environment for all agricultural activities, including rice value chain. The private sector is being mobilized to invest in rice production, processing and marketing to popularize partners to overview priority interventions in the next five years. It is hoped that this in turn would improve rice production and exports, could contribute to foreign exchange earnings for government that would even support the free education initiative. 
Vice President Dr. Mohamed Jul De Jalo said government is engaging in creative thinking to formulate strategies to develop farms. Government has set itself in public and private mobilization to enable Sierra Leone to feed itself. The Vice President said the aim of the conference is to make concrete commitments to improve and make agriculture attractive. Today, our government has set itself to redress that anomaly in a public and private show of commitment. I think that is why we are all gathered here today. More importantly, we are here to launch a very important act of transformation. That is, to mobilize in-country resources to enable Sierra Leone to feed itself. The Minister of Agriculture, Joseph Danema, said his ministry is the centerpiece to mobilize partners in the achievement of a proper rice value chain. He said he has found out that the Agriculture Ministry has weak capacity of human resource and that government spends about $500 million in the importation of food as there is low private sector investment in the agricultural sector. Aware of the weak human resource capacity within the ministry, I have created a technical advisory resource mobilization team to support my administration, fast track the implementation of these priority areas. The Agriculture Minister firmly committed his ministry's desire to prioritize improved policy coherence, investments in rice production and marketing, involvement of women and youth as catalysts for agriculture business and growth, and mechanization in agriculture. Chief Minister Professor David Francis is unhappy that rice is the staple food of Sierra Leone, but the country cannot produce enough to feed and to export. He said government is determined to not only grow to feed its citizens, but to also export as revenue generation drive. He encouraged ministers to develop policies and make the environment for rice production, adding that agricultural transformation is the driving engine for development in any country. Minister of Finance Jacob Jusu Safa assured that governments through his ministry will mobilize resources and would increase the budget allocation for the development of agriculture. A famous private sector Sierra Wilfred Samkin pledged his commitment to provide provide needed expertise and materials to improve rice production in the country. For SLBC News, Daphne Kimamakole reporting. The Ministry of Finance and Economic Development has briefed journalists on the recent supplementary budget that was read by the Minister of Finance in Parliament. The Director of Budget, Ministry of Finance, Tasima Ja, said the budget is aimed at minimizing wastages and to mitigate corruption. The briefing was held at the Ministry of Information and Communications Conference Hall. Joseph Toure was there and he now reports. According to the Director of Budget, Minister of Finance, Tasima Ja, the budget seeks to improve education, health, sports and tourism, among others. He added that the budget is for the poor and that government is harmonizing the wage bill among the working force. The director disclosed that they have collected over 300 billion lions per month as revenue for the past two months, as this was not the case before. He stated that last year's total revenue was 3.1 trillion lions and the projected 4.1 trillion lions at the end of this year. Mr. Jass said government has been deprived of generating more income due to the poorest borders in the country. Salary increases of civil servants. It's not for me, it's not for any of these guys, it's for the grade one to six, the genius of what's that? Of 10%, the forces. Okay? So, you move on to development, capital. We know that there are a lot of infrastructures required. There are a lot of infrastructures required. Some projects were awarded, not funded. Some were awarded wrongly. Updating news about the activities and policies of government, the Deputy Minister of Information and Communication, Solomon Jamiru, said that the government is committed to the sporting discipline of the country. He also informed journalists that the government has engaged staff of the Sierra Leone Commercial Bank, who were on strike action, but have now resumed work. 
The deputy minister highlighted that the government will not abandon its people but will do everything possible for the sector development of the country. Also disclosed that the government is preparing to repeal Part 5 of the 1965 Public Order Act and look for a civil alternative. A whole director of national budget will tell you his leave allowance is one month of his gross annual. That speaks volumes. If any of these guys sitting on the high table would have been working at the World Bank, IMF, or some other institution, we know how much they will be earning. The impression is not that, oh, some people are earning more, so let's just bring them down. That's not the issue. It is very clear that government intends to harmonize the wage bill across the public workforce. So we stop this issue of discriminatory wage issues. We harmonize it across. The Director of Revenue and Tax Policy, Minister of Finance, Idris Akano, said that the supplementary budget omits import duties on flour, reduces the tax from 30 to 20 percent on juice, but has increased tax from 20 to 35 percent on cigarette products because of the health hazard. He added that government is allocating more money to ministries, departments and agencies that are generating income for effective output. The United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the government of Sierra Leone have held an inception forum on adapting to climate change induced coastal risks management in the country. The $10 million project, which is to be implemented within a period of five years, is funded by the Global Environment Facility. The stakeholder session on the project took place at the Golden Tulip Essential Kimbima Hotel at Aberdeen in Freetown. Aruna Patrick Maha filed in this report. This forum was to communicate the project document to key stakeholders, facilitate and consolidate stakeholders' engagement and potential partnership building for the successful implementation of the project. According to the chairman of the inception program, Dr. Reynold Johnson, the project is key to the mitigation of climate change induced coastal risk in the country. He pointed out that, as part of the project, provision of alternative livelihood for people living along the coast is strategic. That will reduce their over-dependence on resources in their communities. Overuse of resources in these coastal communities can lead to extinction of protected species and other marine resources that are of touristic attraction, Dr. Johnson said. He said they will be working with the Ministry of Tourism on component two of the project to improve the sector. The Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Honorable Emma Kowa Jalo, and the Minister of Tourism, Memunatu Purat, said the project will enhance the operations of their ministries. It will help us greatly. The mangroves have been chopped up drastically for either fish drying or for wood or other purposes. But at the same time, the amount of filth on our beaches is not allowing us to have proper exporting facilities to be able to export to Europe and other countries. We really need to be clearing the area up and improve on the coastal habitat and the coastal line. But at the same time, even those living along the coastal areas, they will learn how to manage their environment and improve on their society. This is a very important project to us. Climate change has affected all our activities around the country. So this project, we're going to make sure that we raise the level of awareness in our local communities that are in these beach areas as to the effects of climate change and how that affects economic life, which in turn uh, have an impact on touristic activities in those communities. The executive chairperson, Environmental Protection Agency, Dr. Fodi Jawad, said the project will help control the risk of climate change along coastal communities. The coastal zone of Sierra Leone is highly vulnerable to the increased frequency and severity of coastal erosion, flooding, and storm surges, which severely and negatively bear on social well-being livelihood security and major economic sectors such as fishing, tourism, 
water resources, and agriculture. According to a study by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Sierra Leone is the third most vulnerable country to climate change, for which the need to put mitigation measures in place cannot be overemphasized. What are we talking about? It's a human-induced impact. It's not climate impact. So we need to ask ourselves, what would it take for all of us as Sierra Leoneans to see this as a serious problem, as an urgent problem, and to have a commitment from the community level to the policy level, as the president has well articulated, that we need to work together. It is the view of the environmentalist that climate change induced coastal risk management projects, if properly implemented, will help mitigate the effects of climate change on coastal communities in case there is a rise in sea levels. Following his release on self-bail after interrogation by police for an unauthorized demonstration, the director of Native Consortium, Edmond Abu, has in a press conference said that his position on the increase of pump price of fuel remains the same. Reporter Aminash Nyandi Brahma attended the briefing held at the Sheikh Stephen Street office and filed in this report. Barely a day after his arrest, the executive director of Native Consortium and Research Center, Edmond Abu Jr., has reaffirmed that his organization is unwavering and irrevocable in advocating for the poor people of Sierra Leone. Mr. Abu told newsmen that their next step is to submit a 30-page report to President Bio on the increase in the pump price of petroleum products. Following the increase in pump price of the fuel last week from 6,000 leons to 8,000 leons, Mr. Abu on Tuesday led a protest against the increase in Freetown, which led to his arrest by police for interrogation on alleged illegal possession. He was later released the same day on self-bail. This notwithstanding, Edmond Abu Jr. said that they are a credible think tank organization that will never be involved in disorderly behavior. Because of subsidy, we cannot remove, reduce the pump price. And come November 2016, they increased the price of fuel from 3750 per liter to 6000 We all knew. And then they talk about subsidy, IMF. Oh, lawful subsidy. There is no more subsidy. Subsidy is gone. I mean, how do we... 2016, talk about subsidy. 2015, talk about subsidy. 2017, we went to the IMF to take the ECF loan, we talk about subsidy. 2018, talk about, and we need to check with the subsidy. He maintained that they started raising the issue of field subsidy issue in 2015 under the regime of former President Ernest Baikoma. Edmond Abu Jr. noted that this is not the first time he has been arrested, reiterating that the late President Ahmad Tijan Kaba arrested and sent him to prison for standing for the rights of Sierra Leoneans. The financial and governance advisor Native Consortium, Thomas Legg, said prior to the arrest of Edmund Abu Jr., the Native Consortium wrote to the police stating the time, route, and destination of the protest action. Well, it's almost one week now that hundreds of customers of the Electricity Distribution and Supply Authority, EDSA, here in Freetown have been scrambling to recharge their prepaid meters at different um, centers or point of sale. Well, some of them told the SLBC that this has affected their livelihoods in so many ways. Aminash Nyandi Brahma has been following up that story again. This has been going on for days now. People go to different EDSA outlets to recharge their prepaid meters, and at times they return without a unit. On Wednesday and Thursday this week, hundreds of people were in a long queue in front of EDSA headquarters on Sheikh Stevens Street in Freetown. Her customer, Joseph Lavalli, said he has been without electricity for the past one week and that efforts to top up at different stations have been unsuccessful. I've been in the queue for the past four hours. I don't understand what is happening. We have our prepaid meters, 
but to recharge is a problem. I don't go long, I don't come along, I don't care about. And North Aisatukano expressed similar comments. Last week, and they said, I don't go long, they say the system they do. I am here to buy EDSA prepared to pop, and I have been here since 12 noon. A police officer, Noah Tue, expressed dissatisfaction over the EDSA prepared to pop issue. Well, the process is somehow slow, and to speak the truth, I believe they, um, they should use the, the machine that are outside there, that people usually purchase plenty. And to ease the tension here, I believe they should open those places and substations, like for example, I stay in Jue, at Jue. So from Jue to here is a long distance. So I believe if there are stations open out there at Jue, I believe it will ease the stress here and people will access the meter very easily. So you're saying? Stating that he has been without electricity for the past two days. But what really is the problem? Sega Thomas Kamara is head of customer care. Um, the reason is that um, originally um, the, the sales of credit was outsourced to some a third party to third party, and uh, there were people selling credits to us. But we have some technical problems with communication between EDSA server and their own server. Because of that reason, where they are unable to connect with our system. So that is bringing some delays. And that is what has caused this whole problem. She assured the public that the problem will be solved very soon. This is not the first time for customers to experience this. As about the same period last year, it happened. What many are saying right now is what is EDSA doing to prevent reoccurrence of this top-up issue? Well, over six civil society groups have assessed the first 100 days of President Leo in office. Among issues raised in a press conference is the need for the government to pay more attention to national cohesion. Rose Kodima Stevens has more. Addressing journalists at the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists' office in Freetown, Executive Director Consortium for Democracy and Human Rights, Thomas Babadi, informed journalists that their forums advocate for the common man in the country. He noted that their mandate also is to hold those in governance accountable for their actions. On behalf of the group, he went on to say that the government should address the issues in the post-elections violence across the country and that parliamentary procedures for electing the speaker and deputy speaker be followed. The annulment of boards, summary dismissals, transfers and forceful retirement of competent Leonians should also be addressed in line with best practices. These civil society activists at this session pointed out that the dismissal of the anti-corruption commissioner and some regent chiefs in one region are unconstitutional. The immediate withdrawal of foreign missions together with the transitional report and the state of the economy is nothing to write home about. They therefore recommended that statutes of our constitution be expected wherein the government must establish an independent committee away from political resentment to look at the report and recommend further actions. We recommend the following that the government of President Bill establish an independent committee away from political resentment to look at the report and recommend further actions. That the government of President Bill ensure that all political activities against political opponents in what places in brackets civil and public service and stop immediately. Thomas Babadi also suggests that the government ensures that all political intimidation against political opponents at workplaces and across communities stop with immediate effect, among others. SLBC News, Rose Konima Stevens.
The permanent secretary in the, for the Technical and Higher Education Ministry, Gilbert Heavens Cooper, has said that students should go through the usual way of getting their entrance forms to enter university. He said a refund of their monies will be done later as government awaits receipts of payment for funds from the universities. He made the statement in an interview with our very own Aruna Patrick Kumar. Uh, that's exactly the case. What we are basically saying to the various administrations in the um, universities and the polytechnics and the teacher training colleges is the well, government will definitely pay the money for these forms. But um, the students will have to respect the procedures for the acquisition of these forms. And basically, if they have to go to the banks and pay, then we expect them to go to the banks and pay and obtain valid receipts. Now, after the admission season, we expect the various administrations to collect those receipts and hand them over to the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education and we make sure we reform. The concern here now is before government came out with short release, if they know they are not yet ready to give the money to the university for those forms, they should not even announce that. And now they already prepare the minds of students that they are not going to pay for the forms. And now the universities are asking students to pay for those forms. So it's some kind of duplicating. No, absolutely not. It's, it's really not duplicating at all. I mean, what we are saying, you pay for the funds initially and then um, we'll refund your money. Because it would be rather chaotic if we tell them, okay, don't pay, and uh, you know there is a procedure in place, you have to go to the bank, you have to pay your money through the banking system, you go to university and collect the funds. Um, that would be chaotic, um, it would be a logistical nightmare. So that's why we are saying, don't disrupt the existing procedure. Go ahead, buy your funds as you've been doing in the past. And then at the end of the day, we ask the various university or uh, polytechnic or uh, administrations to just give us the claims and we'll definitely reform the money. So it is confirmed now that they should pay for those forms and be later reformed? Absolutely. So what about those that are doing postgraduates? Are they part of the students that are not going to buy the forms? When we say students, all categories of students. They too, as long as they are buying forms, they don't just buy and they keep their receipts. The moment you get the claims for the for those forms from the universities, the polytechnics and teacher training colleges, we'll definitely make sure we reimburse. So are we not going to see a delay of refunding students' money? Absolutely not. On the part of this ministry there is definitely not going to be a delay. The moment you get the claims from the various institutions, we'll definitely process them and send them to the Ministry of Finance for, for payment and pressure. The, well, if you are really abreast with the financial management system within the Ministry of Finance, I'm pretty sure you realize by now that there are going to be such delays. If you're talking about the past, yes, I can see. But for now, no. We have an efficient financial management system within the Ministry of Finance. There are not be such delays anymore. So students paying for those forms is just for the procedure not to delay the process of them paying the money? Or government paying the money, but the money is already ready for the side of government to pay back. Absolutely. We, we don't really want to create any chaos situation. We're going to the normal procedure. You go, you get your forms, and then uh, we expect those claims to forward to us by the university concern, and then we'll definitely pay. Thank you. That, that's much. not a big deal at all. Thank you very much. You must work for Well, it's now time to take a walk down the corridors of the Wall of Fame and find out which of the stars is shining brightly. It's time for the entertainment news with Mohammed King Milan Bangura. Insanity knocks on my door and I'm breaking 
Kong earthquake was released on July 2014 by Sierra Leonean Yasmin Kadi, who is an Afrobeat pop singer and songwriter. The song reached number one on iTunes in Ireland. She performed on the UK festival circuit with Roots Manova, a London hip hop artist. Yasmin Kadi was born in Freetown on 14th June 1980 of African and Lebanese descent and her family ran away from the rebel war in 1991 and ended up in the UK where they were eventually given social accommodation before they managed to save enough for their livelihood. However, her childhood dream was to become a singer, which was impossible for her in Sierra Leone. In London, she got her education and then a scholarship to attend a music college, the same college where the late actress and singer Julie Andrew of music movie The Sound of Music graduated from. Though Yasmin Kadi is far away from home, Sierra Leone is still in her memories. <laughs> Sierra Leonean, yeah. That's it, that's it. Howdy, buddy. Uh, hey. Yeah. Howdy, buddy. The body fine. Good. The body great. Name? What's your name? When you kiss Sierra Leone, you think blood diamonds. I'm a Sierra Leonean, born on African land. In late 2015, Yasmin Kadi was one of the lead singers that appeared in the Guitar Hero video game, where she showed her talent and became popular throughout Europe. He has been appeared recently on BBC Focus on Africa show where she expressed how proud she is as a refugee in England from the tiny West African country, Sierra Leone, and has beat all the odds to survive and reach her dreams. I'm originally from Sierra Leone, West Africa, and um, we came over to the UK after the Civil War uh, that started in 91. So obviously I've witnessed you know a lot of turmoil so and we ended up here in the uk homeless as refugees and now i'm a singer actress but it it, it took a, a long time for that transition and everything i'd gone through but even though i'm not there sierra leone i'm with sierra leone sierra leone's with me i talk about it i write about it i live and breathe sierra leone yasmin won the judge's choice fans choice award at wembley arena and she toured the uk london's west end and the world in major musical shows she has also been featured in tv commercials and movies recently she played as a mate in the movie series tyrant I can't bring her back to you, but my grandmother was a Nagaba. She was Druze from Lebanon, a poet singer. She taught me her funeral songs. When someone died in her village, everyone come to sing, but you, you're mon alone. I'll sing one for you, a prayer. Yasmin has worked with some London-based producers who have previously worked with Rihanna, Ariana Grande, Saturday's Tiny Temper and more. The singer was publicly proposed to at a London mall by her British friend Williamson and weeks later they were engaged. Recently, the Tidal Notes and now the Sierra Leonean beauty queen and singer has been seen around with a bump and very soon, Sierra Leoneans are going to welcome a niece and nephew. We wish her the best and a healthy delivery of a bouncing baby. Well, many thanks to Mohammed King Milan Bangura for bringing us the entertainment news. Now, here is a press release from State House. The general public is hereby informed that it has pleased His Excellency President Julius Madabio to announce the following appointments subject to the approval of Parliament where necessary. Sierra Leone's diplomatic missions. Dr. Francis Mustafa Kaikai, permanent representative. Sierra Leone Permanent Mission to the United Nations, New York. Dr. Michael Imran Kanu, Deputy Permanent Representative, Legal Affairs, Sierra Leone Permanent Mission to the United Nations, New York. Mrs. Victoria Mange Suleimani, Deputy Permanent Representative, Political Affairs, Sierra Leone Permanent Mission to the United Nations, New York. Mr. Siddiqui Abubakar Wai, 
Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Washington, D.C. Mr. Sheku Mesali, Deputy Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Washington, D.C. Mr. Tamba John Silvanos Lamina, High Commissioner, Sierra Leone High Commission, London, United Kingdom. Mrs. Agnes Dugba Macaulay, Deputy High Commissioner, Sierra Leone High Commission, London, United Kingdom. Mr. Samuel Tamba Musa, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Brussels, Kingdom of Belgium. Mr. Harold Bundu Safa, Deputy Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Brussels, Kingdom of Belgium. Dr. Bemba Lamin Bayo, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Berlin, Germany. Mr. Jonathan Arthur Derek Lee, Deputy Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Berlin, Germany. Mr. Ernest Bimba Indomina, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Beijing, the People's Republic of China. Mr. Safa Wuya Rujas, Deputy Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Beijing, People's Republic of China. Mr. Rashid Sisse, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, UAE. Dr. Solomon Momo Christopher Gembe Sr. High Commissioner, Sierra Leone High Commission, Abuja, Nigeria. Miss Anna Betty Musa, Deputy High Commissioner, Sierra Leone High Commission, Abuja, Nigeria. Mrs. Frances Virginia Anderson, High Commissioner, Sierra Leone High Commission, Accra, Ghana. Mrs. Lucretia Marian Sharif, High Commissioner, Sierra Leone High Commission, Banjul, The Gambia. Mr. Alimami Hassan Bangura, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Conakry, Guinea. Mr. Amid Tal, Deputy Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Conakry, Guinea. Mr. Eddie Siddiqui Masali, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Monrovia, Liberia. Mr. Joseph Mustafa Hazley, Deputy Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Monrovia, Liberia. Ambassador Ali Badara Kamara, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Tehran, Iran. Haja Aisatu Thomas, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Kuwait, Kuwait City. Dr. Ibrahim Jallo, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Mr. Mohammed Hassan Kuruma, Deputy Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Dr. Brahma Patrick Kapua, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Mr. Atumani Denke, Deputy Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Mr. Kathos Jibao Mataya, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Seoul, South Korea. Mr. Mori Fofana, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Cairo, Arab Republic of Egypt. Mr. Mohamed Yungawu, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Moscow, Russia. Dr. Lansana Berry, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Geneva, Switzerland. Mr. Samuel Usman Bugi Safa, Deputy Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Geneva, Switzerland. 
Mr. Peter Joseph Francis, High Commissioner, Sierra Leone High Commission, Nairobi, Kenya. Alhaji Braima Elvis Kuruma, Ambassador, Sierra Leone Embassy, Dakar, Senegal. Mr. Paul Ansumana Senesi Mina, Ambassador at Large. And Mrs. Fatmata Edna Kagbo, Ambassador at Large. That was a press release from State House. And now to end news R, here once again are the main points. US Heat has pledged to fund a two million United States dollars solar energy project in the country. Parliament has approved eight presidential nominees to serve in various positions. Business community leaders have assured President Bill of their support, and the Vice President Dr. Mohammed Julde Jallo has said that the private sector is critical in ensuring increase in rice production in the country. That's all in news hour for tonight. I have been your presenter, Kojo Kwafo, on behalf of the news team. Thanks for watching. Good night.